Welcome students to this video lesson. Today our learning objective is to be able to write an algebraic proof using theorems and deductive reasons to find a solution. So within this, as you can see, we're going to talk about some algebra. So we'll have a little bit of algebra one review, uh, but we'll also be talking about theorems and deductive reasoning. And what that really gets at is proofs. And this is the heart of geometry right here. So by the end of the lesson, hopefully you are able to complete this two column proof. Okay, so like I said, it's really just going to be an algebra lesson today with a couple extra rules thrown into it. So, why don't I have you start with this algebra review problem. Hopefully you are able to look at this and say, yep, I know how to solve for x. So, take a moment, pause the video, and solve for x. Okay, hopefully you are able to get the solution x equals 4. If not, you might want to double check your algebra. But here's where I'm going to introduce what we're actually doing today with the algebra skills. So first you're looking at the problem and you go, well, I'm going to add 13 to both sides. If I add 13 to both sides, I end up getting 2x equals 8. Well, I know if I'm solving for x, I want x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 4. Okay. So hopefully that wasn't too hard. What I actually did is, in a two-column proof, I performed what are called the statements. The two columns, there's the statements and the reasons. The statements are the part of that's actually the math. Okay? This is what you actually did. The reasons is the thought process that goes behind it. Okay? Now, there's a couple of rules when it comes to filling out this reasons column. The first rule, always, 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 is given. Okay? You are just given a problem. Okay? You don't have to think about it all. You just write the problem down. So number one thing is, always, always, always given. Okay, now this is where it starts to get a little tricky. What you want to do when you get to the next reason is you don't want to just look at statement two. You want to actually look at statement one and how did that become statement two? Well, we said it that what we did is we added 13 to both sides. So what we did is we did addition. So again, I'm thinking to myself, how did I go from one to two? That reason goes across from it at 2. So we're going to use the same process here for step 3. Instead of step 3, I'm just like, oh, x equals 4, I'm done, right? I'm not going to write done for my reason. I'm going to write, what did I do from step 2 to step 3? How did I get x equals 4? Again, we said we divided by 2, so we did division. Okay. So this is your building blocks for a two-column proof. They're going to get a little harder as we go, but we're just going to start easing into it with using our Algebra 1 knowledge. So if you look at your guided notes, you have a really long list of things that you have to fill in. These are the algebraic properties, and they're pretty straightforward, but we have to write them down just in case. So um, if we have anything that's equal, like A equals B or whatever, right, so this equals this, what you can do, the golden rule of math, is whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So the addition property of equality is simply you can add something to both sides, okay? We actually did that back here. Oh, it, it was hidden. We added 13 to both sides. We did the addition property. Now, we should probably write addition property of equality. That's really long, so I'm going to let you off the hook today and say you should just write addition property. Okay. Next, the subtraction property is pretty self-explanatory as well. If you have an equality, you can subtract the same thing from both sides. Again, I'm just using letters here to abbreviate the idea of what you do to one side, you must do to the other. Okay, so I'll go pretty quickly through the other two. Multiplication, you just multiply both sides by the same thing. Division, you can divide both sides by the same thing. Again, we did this property as well when we went from 2x equals 8 to x equals 4. Now you'll just know the little caveat here that c can't be 0 because, of course, you can't divide by 0. Now, there's some other properties on here that aren't as obvious. There's something called the reflexive property, and I'll show you in a little bit how you would use this. Um, but the reflexive property means something equals itself. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Well, I just like to think of this one as a reflexive, like you look in the mirror and you see yourself back. So the reflexive property, you're, you equal yourself. The symmetric property 
is that you can change things around from, say, the right side to the left side, and it doesn't change the value. So, for instance, if I said 2 squared equals 4, well, then 4 equals 2 squared. The transitive property and the substitution property are kind of like the same idea. Transitive, I like to think of this one as like a train. So if you have one end connected to the middle and the middle connected to the other end, well then really they're all connected to each other. So the first and the last things are equal to each other. So that's a transitive property. Substitution, kind of the same idea. Substitution, you know from algebra, uh, you can replace one thing with another thing of equivalent value. So it's kind of what we did in the transitive property up here. We took out B and we replaced C. And finally, the distributive property is just an algebraic property you've probably done for a while now. You, when you have a number outside of parentheses, you need to distribute it in. So let's say this is my proof. I have my statements over here and my reasons over here. If my statement 1 says x equals y, and then my statement 2 says y equals x, what should my reason be? Pause the video if you need a second, look back at your notes, and figure out what did I just, just demonstrate here. Well, I demonstrated the symmetric property. Here we go. Right? All I did is I changed the order, first to last and last to first. And again, it was just easy as that because it went from step one to step two. The reason went on step two. All right, you're probably looking ahead at this one. If anywhere in a proof, anywhere, it doesn't matter what step it's at, if I have something equals itself, that's just the reflexive property. Again, the more practice we get their proofs, the better you'll see why we would actually use this. Right now, it might seem kind of pointless, uh, but it actually comes into play a lot when you get to triangles. Um, and finally, the third instance, um, if I have a step here and then this one, what happened? What's the difference between step one, step two? Well, I distributed the two around the parentheses, so I used the distributed property. Okay, so I think I got them all in. So let's see if we can complete the success criteria. So again, pause the video, take a couple moments, and see if you can fill out the statements. Um, Hopefully that doesn't go so poorly, but then remember the reasons and think about the rules that I instigated. Okay, I'm going to go through this fast because you should just be checking your work. So what I did first is I distributed. I distributed the 2n, um, and then I combined these guys, so I just simplified that side. And then I added 14 to both sides, and I divided by 6, so I got x equals 3. So now, let's fill out the reasons. Well, I started with my given. Uh, next, I um, had to get rid of the parentheses, so I used the distributive property. This step is kind of weird. We actually haven't talked about it yet. Um, I took negative 10, I did minus 4, and I got the negative 14. Um, I won't really call this like adding or subtracting, because I'm not actually adding or subtracting something to either side. I like to call it that I'm just simplifying and making my life a little bit easier. Um, or you could say like combine like terms, like I'm combining the constants. Um, and then what I did is I added 14 to both sides, so I did the addition property. And then they told us already what we should do is divide. Now yours might not look exactly like this, but that's totally fine. Uh, an alternative option would be to add 4 to both sides right away. So your second reason would be addition. And then you would have distribution. And then actually, if you did that, you wouldn't have to do the simplify or combine like terms at all. You would eventually have to do addition again to bring the 10 over. So you can have different variations of the same proof as long as you get to the same end result. All right, so when you come to class tomorrow, you're going to do some homework in the books. Um, and yeah, I hope this video lesson went well for you, and we'll see you tomorrow.